2017's new M the Muslim Ishtama was the ideal opportunity to ask UK converts about what it means to be an Ahmadi Muslim. MTN News sat with men and women from many backgrounds, English, American, European and Arab, who shared their stories. I was really curious as to whether or not God still talked to people. And growing up as a Christian, we were told that that was finished. It ended with Jesus. So I had a problem with that because I thought that God should, uh, and if he's eternal, he should always talk. Anyway, one day, uh, I'm a banker, so one day I went to go um, do some business with some clients, and they were Muslim, some Arab Muslims. And uh, after we concluded our business, I asked them what gave them this conviction about religion. They told me that it was because of their book, the Quran, which God dictated. So I found that rather shocking and intriguing. So I started to investigate uh, the Quran. And the more I looked into it, the more I looked into the life of the Holy Prophet, وسلم, the more I was intrigued until I uh, resigned myself that this was more likely true than not. So I started to pray about it and I saw many different dreams on the other hand, being a former Christian, I thought it was a rather large claim to, uh, to be the Messiah. So I thought, how many generations have come and gone, lived and died waiting for this Messiah? I mean, what are the odds that in my lifetime I would come to know, let alone accept him? So I went home and I prayed about it and uh, while walking down the street, incidentally, and I thought, oh God, if this man is true, um, because I've been running around using the knowledge that I've learned from his books. So if he's true, then help me understand it. Um, and if he's not, cause these people in this community to move away from me. Um, but don't let me be a hypocrite. And so I went home and fell asleep on the couch. And I was only asleep for a few moments where a sound like, like a low plane flying overhead or like very powerful thunder um, said to me, number one, preach, there is none worthy of worship, save Allah. And number two, preach, there is none worthy of worship, save Allah. And it was so powerful, it felt like whatever this voice was had my soul in the grip. Like I couldn't tell if I was alive or dead. Anyway, that had to have been the most powerful spiritual experience I had ever um, gone through. And uh, when I recovered, from that, which is probably the best way to describe it. When I recovered from that experience, there was no doubt in any part of my mind or my heart that Jamaat Ahmadiyya was true. Hamza Saab is far from the only person to be guided to Ahmadiyyat by true dreams and spiritual experiences. Alhamdulillah, I saw many dreams which really give me a power. The first time I, I, I see to myself, maybe this is only psychology things because I'm thinking too much about this. Maybe that's why I'm dreaming or I'm, I'm saying that. But Alhamdulillah, I feel I'm like someone telling me or someone um, holding my hand and telling me, Amina, you have to, to follow this Jama'at or these people. So Alhamdulillah, after two years uh, for reading books and researching, I, I did my bayat. For the new Amthis, even after conversion, their spiritual progress continues. I was feeling very distant from Allah because um, I'd had my whole summer to study Islam and get immersed in the books and whatnot. Uh, but then I went back to university and studies take up a huge amount of time. So I said to Allah that I'm, I'm new to this. Um, you've guided me to your faith, but I, I need some extra help now. And um, that night, uh, Hazor came to me in a dream and told me that you need to read uh, Revelation, Rationality, uh, Knowledge and Truth by the Fourth Caliph. Reading this got me back on track and it was something that I could do whilst I had my studies going. And it was something which, because I study science, didn't make the scientific field of thought interfere or cause too much doubt in my faith as well. Even the oldest converts in their 70s are still excited to start building their relationship with the Caliph of the Andean Muslim community Hazrat Mirza Masur Ahmed. Yeah, I think we we were building a bridge between Azul and me, myself, and I was very uh, very honoured about that, and I, I'm following it up to this event today.